sensory organs. The external environment has different types of stimuli which is detected with the help of specialized organs with the specialized receptors by the organisms. Specialized organs have the ability to detect the signals and transmit to central nervous system CNS to evoke appropriate reaction. Such organs are called sensory organs which contains specialized receptors. A sensory receptor is nerve cell that responds to specific stimuli which is either produced externally or internally and acts as a transducer of received signals. That is, this will convert transduced energy from one form, example, light, temperature, etc., into electrical activity ultimately as action potential. The nerve impulses then travel along with sensory efferent nerve to the central nervous system for processing and to form a response. There are many types of sense organs that contain different sensory receptors such as chemoreceptors, thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, photoreceptors, nociceptor, electroreceptors. This is the stimulus transduction pathway. It is received by the receptor and relayed to the central nervous system, CNS. The CNS decodes the stimulus and sends and relays the action stimulus via the motor neuron to the effector. The effector produces the necessary response in that part of the body. Chemoreceptor the receptor that is sensitive to chemicals usually found in tongue and nasal cavity and monitors the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide in body fluids. It helps animals to locate food and find mates. In case of insects or invertebrates, the receptors are found all over their body. Taste is a common sensation throughout the animal kingdom. In particular, the ability to taste bitter substances is almost universal in the animal kingdom as it serves a protective purpose by warning against potentially toxic substances. Chemoreceptors in human are present in the papillae of the tongue. These are called taste cells, gustatory cells or gustatory receptor cells. The role of smell is also important in many animals. Secretion of pheromones is a good example for this. These are volatile chemicals released into the atmosphere which are used as signals to attract other animals. Chemoreceptors in nose are called olfactory cells or olfactory receptors. For example, the female silkworm moth, Bombyx mori, releases a chemical called bombicol, which is used to attract a male mate. The male has receptors for bombicol in its antony. Thermoreceptor Thermoreceptor detects changes in temperature in the environment, either as external or internal. It is an important parameter to be measured since it can have a profound effect upon the functioning of animals. Thermoreceptor is present at different parts of the body for different organisms. In case of invertebrates, their body temperature changes according to changing environmental temperature. But in case of mammals, the core temperature is maintained always. Mechanoreceptor Pleasure, roughness, stretch or vibrations are sensed by mechanoreceptor. Most mechanoreceptors are found in the skin. Mechanoreceptors are also found in the inner ear where it is needed for the senses of hearing and balance. Mechanoreceptor can be classified into two. They are tactile receptor that senses the touch light and senses that can be felt by epidermis. Proprioceptor that detects the change in posture, that is, governs the locomotion of the body. 
receptors can also be classified according to the type of stimuli they are touch receptors in the skin which are stimulated by light mechanical stimuli pressure receptors in the subcutaneous tissues which are stimulated by deep mechanical stimuli stretch receptors in the skeletal muscles lungs right atrium urinary bladder stomach intestine and rectum joint receptors send information about the position and movement of the joint auditory receptors are stimulated by sound waves types of mechanoreceptor in glabrous hairless skin there are four principal types of mechanoreceptors each shaped according to its function the tactile corpuscles maisena respond to light touch and adapt rapidly to changing texture vibrations around 50 hertz the bulbous corpuscles rufini detect tension deep in the skin and fascia the merkel nerve endings detect sustained pressure the lamellar corpuscles pisinian in the skin and fascia detect rapid vibrations of about 200 to 300 hertz receptors in hair follicles sense when a hair changes position indeed the most sensitive mechanoreceptors in humans are the follicular receptors of the hair cells in the cochlea of the inner ear these receptors transduce sound for the brain mechano receiving free nerve endings detect touch pressure and stretching photoreceptors this structure is responsible for vision the retina is a membrane containing sensory receptors that lines the internal aspect of the posterior wall of the eyeball it is composed of epithelial glial and neural cells which are organized into 10 distinctive layers in which a specialized group of receptors photoreceptors can be found these photoreceptors are localized around an area near the center of the retina called the macula which is the functional center of the retina the fovea is located in the center of the macula photoreceptor cells the ability to detect light is the property of photoreceptor Most photoreceptors are found in the eyes and are needed for the sense of vision. Highly folded photoreceptor cells contain pigments, the most common of which is rhodopsin, which are chemically changed in the presence of light through a series of intricate reactions that result in alterations in the membrane potential of the receptor. Photoreceptors in the retina are classified into two groups named after their physical morphologies. Rod cells are highly sensitive to light and function in night vision. Cone cells are capable of detecting a wide spectrum of light photons and are responsible for color vision. Here is a brief note on rod cells and cone cells. Rod cells shape cylindrical number high light sensitivity high visual acuity low vision type night vision present at fovea no cell types single type photopigment types achromatic one type cone cells shape conical number low light sensitivity low visual acuity high vision type color vision present at fovea yes cell types three types l s m photopigment types chromatic red green blue nociceptors nociceptors responds to pain and it is also known as pain receptors they are found in internal organs as well as on the surface of the body Nociceptors are sensory receptors with a high threshold for activation and are primarily sensitive to tissue trauma or stimuli that would damage the tissue if the exposure were prolonged. These receptors are closely linked to the free endings of primary efferent nerve fibers that are distributed throughout the body's periphery. 
The peripheral terminal of the mature or nociceptor is where the noxious stimuli are detected and transduced into the electrical energy. When the electrical energy reaches a threshold value, an action potential is induced and driven towards the central nervous system, CNS. This leads to the train of events that allows for the conscious awareness of pain. The pain pathways is of both ascending and descending. In ascending pathway, the efferent nociceptive fibers send the information to the brain and travel back to the spinal cord where they form synapses. In descending pathway, the brain requests for the release of specific hormones that can have analgesic effects which can inhibit the pain sensation. Different nociceptors are activated depending on the type of stimuli. They are triggered only when the threshold reaches high due to the changes either in chemical, thermal or mechanical environments. Based on this, it is classified as thermal nociceptors, mechanical nociceptors, chemical nociceptors, polymodal nociceptors, sleeping or silent nociceptors. Some nociceptors get stimulated due to these environment modalities while others are due to inflammation. Types of nociceptors Thermal nociceptors Thermal nociceptors are activated by noxious heat or cold at various temperatures. There are specific nociceptor transducers that are responsible for the thermal stimuli. The warm hot range is sensed by more than one TRP channel. The cool stimuli are sensed by TRPM8 channels. Example, TRPV1, it has a threshold that coincides with the heat pain temperature of 43 degrees Celsius. Mechanical nociceptors Mechanical nociceptors respond to excess pressure or mechanical deformation. They also respond to incisions that break the skin surface. The transducer for thermal stimuli are the same for mechanical stimuli. Example, TRPA1 appears to detect both mechanical and chemical changes. Chemical nociceptors Chemical nociceptors have TRP channels that respond to a wide variety of chemicals. Chemical nociceptors have the capacity to detect endogenous ligands and certain fatty acid amines that arise from changes in internal tissues. Example, TRPV1 can detect chemicals like capsaicin and spider toxins and acids. Sleeping or silent nociceptors Although each nociceptor has a variety of possible threshold levels, some do not respond to all chemical, thermal or mechanical stimuli unless injury actually has occurred. These are typically referred to as silent or sleeping nociceptor. These responses come only on the onset of inflammation to the surrounding tissue. Polymodal nociceptors Many neurons perform only a single function. Therefore, neurons that perform these functions in combination are given the classification polymodal. Phases of nociceptive pain Nociceptors detect physical damage to the body, which create electrical signals. The signals travel to the spinal cord, which then sends the message up to the brain. There are four phases involved in nociceptive pain. 1. Transduction Tissue injury, bumping arm on a table, triggers the release of chemicals, for example, substance P or prostaglandins within the body which then excite the nociceptive nerve fibers. 2. Transmission During this phase, the pain message moves from skin, bones, joints or internal organs toward the spine and then up to the brain. It first reaches the brain stem, then moves up to the thalamus and finally to the cerebral cortex where the brain has a map that registers the exact location of pain in the body. 3. Perception. In this phase, one becomes aware 
are conscious of the pain, which is the perception of pain. 4. Modulation This is the final phase, where the brain interacts with the nerves to modulate or alter the pain experience, for example, to adjust the intensity and duration. Modulation involves the release of chemicals such as endorphins and serotonin that reduce the transmission of pain signals. Electroreceptor These receptors can sense any change in the electric field. A few fishes such as sharks and rays can detect electric field generated by moving water. It helps in defense to catch prey as well as to navigate. Some of the fishes have electric organs, which are useful in defense as they can create a high-voltage shock. Electroreceptors are also used to identify opposite sexes. Electrolocation Electroreceptive animals use, example, sharks, etc., this sense to locate objects around them. This is important in ecological niches where the animals cannot depend on vision, for example, in caves in murky water and at night. Many fishes use electric fields to detect buried prey. Some shark embryos and pups freeze when detected the characteristic electric signal of their predators. It has been proposed that sharks can use their acute electric sense to detect the Earth's magnetic field by detecting the weak electric currents induced by their swimming or by the flow of ocean currents. Electrolocation classified into two Active electrolocation, passive electrolocation. Active electrolocation. In active electrolocation, the animal senses its surrounding environment by generating electric fields and detect distortions in these fields using electroreceptor organs. This electric field is generated by means of a specialized electric organ consisting of modified muscles or nerves. This field may be modulated depending on its frequency and waveform which are unique to the species and sometimes to the individual. Animals that use active electroreception including the weakly electric fish like elephant nosefish which either generate small electrical pulses termed pulse type or produce a quasi-sinusoidal discharge from the electric organ termed wave type. These fish can create a potential which is usually smaller than 1 volt. Electric fish can discriminate objects around with different resistance and capacitance values which may help to identify the object. Active electroreception typically has a range of about one body length, though objects with an electrical impedance similar to that of the surrounding water are nearly undetectable. Passive electrolocation In passive electrolocation, the animal senses the weak bioelectric fields generated by other animals and uses it to locate them. These electric fields are generated by all animals due to the activity of their nerves and muscles. A second source of electric fields in fish are the ion pumps associated with osmoregulation at the gill membrane. This field is modulated by the opening and closing of the mouth and gill slits. Eavesdropping by electroreceptive predators poses conflict for electric fish, which depend on their electric organ discharge EOD signals both for navigation and communication in the dark. It has been observed in the electroreceptive African sharp toothed catfish Gladius garipenis whilst hunting weakly electric Marxenius macrolepidotus. Passive electroreception is carried out solely by ampullary electroreceptors in fish. It is sensitive to low frequency signals between 1 and up to tens of hertz. Fish use passive electroreception to supplement or replace other senses when detecting prey and predators. In sharks, sensing an electric dipole alone is sufficient to cause them to try to eat it. Electrocommunication Electric fish can also communicate by modulating the electrical waveform they generate, is an ability known as electrocommunication.
they may use this for attracting mate and territorial displays. Some species of catfish use their electric discharges only in agonistic displays. In one species of Brachii hypopomus, a genus of South American river fish belonging to the family Hypopomidae, commonly known as blunt-nosed knife fishes. The electric discharge pattern is similar to the low-voltage electrolocative discharge of the electric eel. Sensory Mechanism Active electroreception relies upon tuberous electroreceptors which are sensitive to high frequency 20 to 20,000 Hz stimuli. These receptors have a loose plug of epithelial cells which capacitively couples the sensory receptor cells to the external environment. Passive electroreception, however, relies upon ampullary receptors which are sensitive to low frequency stimuli below 50 Hz. These receptors have a jelly filled canal leading from the sensory receptors to the skin surface. More mirrored electric fish from Africa use tuberous receptors known as Nolan organs to sense electric communication signals. Examples shark and ray, bony fish, monotreme, dolphins, and bees. Eyes Eyes are located in sockets of the skull called orbits. The adult human eyeball is nearly a spherical structure. The wall of the eyeball is composed of three layers. The external layer is composed of a dense connective tissue and is the sclera. The anterior portion of this layer is called the cornea. The middle layer, choroid, contains many blood vessels and looks bluish in color. The choroid layer is thin over the posterior two-thirds of the eyeball. It becomes thick in the anterior part to form the ciliary body. The ciliary body itself continues forward to form a pigmented and opaque structure called the iris, which is the visible colored portion of the eye. The eyeball contains a transparent crystalline lens which is held in place by ligaments attached to the ciliary body. In front of the lens, the aperture surrounded by the iris is called pupil. The diameter of the pupil is regulated by the muscle fibers of iris. The inner layer is the retina and it contains three layers of neural cells from inside to outside, ganglion cells, bipolar cells and photoreceptor cells. There are two types of photoreceptor cells, namely rods and cones. These cells contain the light-sensitive proteins called photopigments. The daylight, photopic, vision and color vision are functions of cones and the twilight, scotopic vision is the function of the rods. The rods contain a purplish red protein called the rhodopsin or visual purple which contains a derivative of vitamin A. In the human eye, there are three types of cones which possess their own characteristic photopigments that respond to red, green and blue lights. The sensations of different colors are produced by various combinations of these cones and their photopigments. When these cones are stimulated equally, a sensation of white light is produced. The optic nerves leave the eye and the retinal blood vessels enter it at a point medial to and slightly above the posterior pole of the eyeball. Photoreceptor cells are not present in that region and hence it is called blind spot. Mechanism of Vision The light rays in visible wavelength focused on the retina through the cornea and lens generate potentials, impulses in rods and cones. As mentioned earlier, the photosensitive compounds, photopigments, in the human eyes is composed of opsin, a protein, and retinal, an aldehyde of vitamin A. Light induces dissociation of the retinal from opsin, resulting in changes in the structure of the opsin. This causes membrane permeability changes. As a result, potential differences are generated in the photoreceptor cells. This produces a signal that generates action potential in the ganglion cells through the bipolar cells. 
At posterior pole of the eye lateral to the blind spot, there is an yellowish pigmented spot called macula lutea with a central pit called fovea. The fovea is a thinned out portion of the retina where only the cones are densely packed. It is the point high resolution. The space between the cornea and the lens is called the aqueous chamber and contains thin watery fluid called aqueous humor. The space between the lens and the retina is called the vitreous chamber and is filled with the transparent gel called vitreous humor. These action potentials, impulses, are transmitted by the optic nerve to the visual cortex area of the brain where the neural impulses are analyzed and the image formed on the retina is recognized based on earlier memory and experience. Ear The ears perform two sensory functions, hearing and maintenance of body balance. The ear can be divided into three major sections. Outer ear, pinna, and external auditory, canal, middle ear, malleus, incus, stapus, inner ear, bony and the membranous labyrinthus, outer ear, the pinna collects the vibration in the air which produce sound. The external auditory canal leads inwards and extends up to the eardrum also called tympanic membrane. Pinna and external auditory canal has fine air to arrest dirt which are highly sensitive to external disturbances. They also contain wax secreting glands that are for protection of air. The tympanic membrane is composed of connective tissues covered with skin outside and with mucous membrane inside. Middle ear. The middle ear contains Three ossicles called malleus, incus, and stapus, which are attached to one another in a chain like fashion. The malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane and the stapus is attached to the oval window of cochlea. The ear ossicles increase the efficiency of transmission of sound waves to the inner ear. An eustachian tube connects the middle ear cavity with the pharynx. The eustachian tube helps in equalizing the pressures on either sides of the eardrum. Inner Ear The fluid-filled inner ear called labyrinth consists of two parts, the bony and the membranous labyrinthus. The bony labyrinth is a series of channels. Inside these channels lies the membranous labyrinth, which is surrounded by a fluid called perilymph. The membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called endolymph. The coiled portion of the labyrinth is called cochlea. The membranes constituting cochlea, the raisiners and basilar divide the surrounding perilymph filled bony labyrinth into an upper scala vestibuli and a lower scala tympanum. The space within cochlea called scala media is filled with endolymph. At the base of the cochlea, the scala vestibuli ends at the oval window, while the scala tympani terminates at the round window which opens to the middle ear. Functions of ear The ear performs the functions of hearing and balancing. Equilibrium Mechanism of hearing The sound waves are collected by the external ear up to some extent. They pass through the external auditory meters to the tympanic membrane which is caused to vibrate. The vibrations are transmitted across the middle ear by the malleus, incus and to the stapus bones. The stapus fits into the fenestra ovalis. The perilymph of the internal ear receives the vibrations through the membrane covering the fenestra ovalis. From the perilymph, the vibrations are transferred to the scala vestibuli of cochlea and then to scala media through Raisner's membrane. Thereafter, the movements of endolymph and tectorial membrane stimulate the sensory hairs of the organ of corti. The impulses thus received by the hair cells are carried to the brain, 
temporal lobe of each cerebral hemisphere through the auditory nerve where the sensation of hearing is felt, recognized. This is an image showing all parts of the ear. Nose These are sensory cells of smell in the mucous membrane of the upper part of the nose. Nerve fibers from these cells pass into the brain. This region is referred to as the olfactory epithelium and contains bipolar sensory neurons. Each olfactory sensory neuron has dendritus that extend from the apical surface of the epithelium into the mucus lining the cavity. As airborne molecules are inhaled through the nose, they pass over the olfactory epithelial region and dissolve into the mucus. These odorant molecules bind to proteins that keep them dissolved in the mucus and help transport them to the olfactory dendritus. The odorant protein complex binds to a receptor protein within the cell membrane of an olfactory dendrite. Tongue Gustation is the special sense associated with the tongue. The surface of the tongue, along with the rest of the oral cavity, is lined by a stratified squamous epithelium. Raised bumps called papillae contain the structures for gustatory transduction. There are four types of papillae based on their appearance. Circumvallate, foliate, filiform and fungiform. Within the structure of the papillae are taste buds that contain specialized gustatory receptor cells for the transduction of taste stimuli. These receptor cells are sensitive to the chemicals contained within foods that are ingested and they release neurotransmitters based on the amount of the chemical in the food. In the back of the mouth, the tongue is anchored into the hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is the only bone not connected to any other bone in the body. The tongue's primary physiologic function is gustatory sensation, tasting and aiding in masticulation, chewing and also helps with speech and sound formation. The tongue is made up of a number of individual muscles that aid in positioning it while chewing or speaking. The four common tastes are sweet, sour, bitter and salty. A fifth taste called umami results from tasting glutamate present in monosodium glutamate. The average person has between 2000 and 8000 taste buds on their tongue but this number varies widely. There are a number of problems that can develop with the tongue which include nerve damage that inhibits tongue movement and can make speaking and chewing difficult. Taste abnormalities can be caused by damage to the taste buds from infection or injuries such as burns. Pain in the tongue can be caused by mouth ulcers, anemia or even mouth cancer. Taste buds the upper skin surface of the tongue contains the taste buds. Several thousand taste buds are located on the surface of the papillae, which are collections of nerve-like cells that connect to nerves running to the brain. The tongue has many nerves that help detect and transmit taste signals to the brain. Because of this, all parts of the tongue can detect these four common tastes. Taste buds cover the surface of small, nipple-like projections called papillae which are easily visible. Skin The largest sense organ of the body, skin is the interface between the organism and its environment. It must ensure that the organism is able to perceive all environmental changes. Tactile receptors are spread over the body surface. Cutaneous nerves contain sensory and sympathetic autonomic nerve fibers. The sympathetic motor fibers mixed with the sensory fibers in the dermis send branches to the sweat glands, blood vessels. The sensory fibers and their specialized organs are receptors for touch, pain, temperature, itch and physical and chemical stimuli. A large portion of the human sensory cortex receives sensory messages from the skin of the face and the hands, areas that are especially well supplied with the receptor organs.